to Drummers Only Radio. Drummers Only is the UK's leading drum shop with store locations in Glasgow and Leeds. Our podcasts are full of interviews, gear reviews, and much more from the unique perspective of a drum shop. The show is hosted by two pasty Scottish dudes who talk real fast. Whoa. Slow down there, Braveheart. So here's Chris, the Glasgow shop manager, and Adam, the social media manager. Be sure to like, subscribe, and let's do this. Hello. Hi. How are you? How are you? Very well. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, man. I Hopefully can't... it's better than the last one. Oh, man. Tell me about it. 2021. Here well, we... you know, I had a baby, so as well documented, so I didn't have the worst 2020. I didn't have the best 2020, but I didn't have as... Bad a year as other people did. Yeah, so. exactly. Silver lining for me. Silver lining. That's yep. it. How was Christmas? Um, it was festive, as you would good. imagine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was all good, man. What about yourself? Fine, relaxed. Baby's first Christmas. Took it easy. You know, made some ham, ate some ham, drank some beer. Yep. That's what you're going to say. Drank some ham. I mean, ate some beer. No. Yeah. No. Oh, touche. Touche. Um, so this is Drummers Only Radio episode number thirty-seven. I hope you've been uh, enjoying episodes one to thirty-six so far. Yes. Thanks very yes. much for those that have checked it out. Yes, appreciate that. Everyone who's subscribed. Yeah. Um, uh, if people if people ask us about this all the time, but if you want to send us any questions or mm-hmm. if you've got anything you want to ask us, you know, drop us a line info at drummersonly.co.uk. Absolutely. Um, we like to answer view, viewer submitted, mm-hmm. listener submitted, either viewer list- either or. Um, we will say, or I will say, up the top of this episode, um, we have a pretty cool subject that we've both really wanted to talk about. Um, if you're listening to this one, it may some of this information may not translate if you're just listening to this episode. Mm. Um, we fully recommend that you watch this one because um, we're going to get in depth. What are we going to get in depth about, Christopher? Well, Adam, we are going to get in depth about sonar drums, in particular our sonar drums. Yes. So if you're watching this, you'll see that Christopher has his beautiful sonar vintage series kit mm-hmm. right in front of him, and in front of me is my uh, also beautiful. Sonar SQ1 drum kit. Yeah, yeah, we thought we would have just like, you know, people ask us what we play and we like these drums, so we thought we would talk about them. So as Adam said, it is probably beneficial to watch this, but we will do our best to describe what we are talking about too. So um, first up, man, why did you pick a, a Sonar kit, SQ1? Well, before we go into why I picked this kit, should we give a brief overview of what, for those, of, for, for anyone who doesn't know about the range of Sonar? Sure, okay. Um, are we going to talk about purely the German range? I would, yes. So for this episode, we're purely going to discuss the the German-made Sonar drums. So um, obviously they have their entry-level kits as well. They have mm-hmm. the AQ-1 and, and the AQ-2. Two. Two. Mm-hmm. Um, AQ-1 being made out of birch mm-hmm. and AQ-2 being made out of maple. Mm-hmm. Um, but we thought we'd focus on um, the German-made drums. So these are the drums that are obviously all made in the Sonar factory in Germany. Yeah, they're all handmade as well, yes. which is... Uh, one of the unique features. Um, so they have f- four ranges that come out of the German factory. Yes. Uh, three of which uh, that we'll talk about today are off the shelf, if you like. Uh, there is the SQ1, the Vintage Series, and the Pro Light. Uh, in no discernible order, really. Yeah, there's um, no. What I like about Sonar is that there is no real. Um, What's the word I want to use? Hierarchy. Yes, thank you. That's the exact word I was looking for. Um, there's no hierarchy in the range, so you literally have a choice of whichever wood you like the sound of. Yeah, so all three drum kits are made out of a completely different wood. So the idea being, um, if you can't find something within the three ranges that are off the shelf, you would look at the SQ2 range, which is their complete flagship. That is their flagship range, the custom range where you can pick all the options, etc., etc. Yes. But the other three ranges that we'll talk about are made from uh, different woods, SQ1 being... Birch. And the Vinci series is a beach kit. Uh, Sonar are kind of synonymous with beach. It's um, the, as indigenous to where they are in Germany and Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of it, it's abundant rather, it grows a lot there so they use a lot of birch, uh, sorry beech um, from sort of their back door. Yes and then they also have vintage maple as well. Yeah well it's it's, uh, the vintage part of it is the makeup of the shell. Yeah. So the the, the wood itself is is not the vintage, it's not like it's aged maple so sometimes people can get those kind of details confused when, when a brand calls something a vintage shell it's just because of how the shell is made yeah of course 
and the vintage range the vintage series rather that I play there are four finishes um, there is the uh, marine pearl the vintage pearl which I play there is the California blue there is the red oyster and there is the black slate so I think before we even talk about why you play a vintage series kit mm-hmm. or why you've chosen a vintage series mm-hmm. kit let's have a little listen to how it sounds sure one two three These drums to me are ridiculously warm. I yeah. think that was the major attraction when I, when I played them the first time. I actually was introduced to this range by Jeff Davenport, who we had on the podcast recently. Of course, yeah, huge he, sonar. He yeah. obviously used to help distribute. Sonar well, he was the he was the sales rep for the f- the company that used to distribute them. That's what it is. Sorry. Yeah. So he yeah. worked for a company that were that that brought sonar into the UK, and he drove the length and breadth of the UK trying to get people into sonar. Mm-hmm. Now he had come up to do a Remo tuning day, mm-hmm. and he brought with him his vintage series kit, and I, I he let me play it. it sort of last kick, no, that was left in the shop. It was just him, Gordon, and I. I think we were floating around, and I, I I couldn't pull myself off this thing. It was one of the few drum kits I've played in a long time where time sort of disappeared Mm. and it kind of reminded me why i play the drums yeah i just kept like i think he only had three drums that day a snare drum a bass drum and a floor tom i think he only brought those three with him and i just couldn't get off them man i just i just kept playing it and playing it and playing it i was like this is remarkable was that your first time playing a sonar kit um was it certainly it, it's the first time I can consciously remember playing a sonar yeah, kit. Yeah. I, I mean, I may have played like the lower ranges, like the three thousand and seven, the older, mm-hmm. low, the older um, stuff so that like was made in the, far, that. Yeah, in the yeah. far eastern stuff. And the shop had stopped sonar before. Um, there was things like the Beach Infinite came out, um, and things like that. Um, and I'm sure we had them, and I'd, I'd kind of like tapped them. But sonar were always seen as this kind of. Um, destination brand mm-hmm. like you kind of arrive at sonar yeah um and that sounds a bit a bit wanky i don't mean it like that i mean that like the distribution wasn't particularly great for years and trying to get them in the uk could have been a bit of a challenge and they were notoriously expensive for a long long time and mm-hmm. the, um 
so they weren't readily available. You, you couldn't go and find them. Yeah. Um, but I remember playing this kit and be like, Jesus Christ, man, that is a drum kit. Mm-hmm. Even when you were playing it there, just to interrupt you, sorry, it sounded absolutely incredible. Thank you. Um, it, I, I love it. I, I, I love it. I think it's the f- my favourite kit that I've ever owned and played. Wow. Yeah, yes. and I've played a lot of drums in my time. You know, yeah. um, I've played. <laughs> I've been around the block, oh, so I know I know how that sounded. Yeah. But, um, you know, working in a drum shop, you you get to play drums. You you get to see a lot of yeah. gear, and I've played Brady's. I've played Aots. I've played Craviotos. I've played. I mean, I played Yamaha for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. I've, yeah, I've, huge. I've through a, a, yeah. a big compliment of Yamaha kits um, mm. over the over the years. But there's just something about this kit. There's something about this range of drums. I think it's really versatile. As you heard, it can tune up and it can tune down. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I get slagged for being the jazz guy, um, but <laughs> this kit kind of can, you can put it through its paces in a variety yeah. of styles, you know? So if I need it to do that, mm-hmm. I can easily tune them up and it's ready to go. Yeah. But if I want it to be a wee bit meatier and a wee bit lower in pitch, it's really, really easy to do that as well, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty rad. Aye, it, it, it's 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 magic. So yeah. what what are the kind of um, for those who maybe don't know, um, what are the kind of specs of this kit? Okay, so um, as we said, it's made from beach. Um, the whole idea of this kit was to make a modern vintage drum kit. So I, I, I've I, you know vintage drums have gone through a kind of renaissance in the last five to ten years. There's a lot of drummers using old gear. They, mm-hmm. they like old Ludwigs and they like old Gretsch kits and the round badge thing has been around for a long long time. And Sonar, uh, much like Ludwig and Gretsch, are, are what we deem a heritage brand in that they have over a hundred years of, of drum building under their, under their belt and, mm-hmm. and, and making and selling drums. So they uh, were around in the 60s, um, a lot of jazz guys used them. So they wanted to make that kit again, but they wanted to make it modern so mm-hmm. it uh, can stand up in a way that vintage drums often don't. Mm-hmm. So um, they redid things like the hardware. So you'll notice um, on the on the video, you can see the lugs quite clearly, but if, if you're just listening, the drums have teardrop lugs on them, which was a feature of the drums in the 60s. They look like a teardrop. They... Um, um, they're offset on the the smaller drums, like the the, the rack toms and the snare drums. So um, they don't they don't go in a line. They they go offset. Um, you can see that if you look at the camera on the on the, um, the the twelve, you can see that the top and bottom lug are slightly away from each other. Um, it has rounded over edges. Um, we will look at the bearing edges in a moment. Um, but, but what that means is in, instead of the bearing edge being cut at an angle like the flush to the head so that the head is allowed to vibrate as much as it can. These are rounded over the top. Mm-hmm. Um, and that allows more of the drum head to touch the wood. Mm-hmm. So that becomes a sort of natural damping agent for the drums. So mm-hmm. you can kind of kind of sort of mitigate the need for using gels mm-hmm. or snare weights or anything else that you might need. So um, the sonar... Um, from what my, my if my history's right, I'm pretty sure Sona were the, the the company that first invented the 45 degree bearing edges. Mm. I think it was around 74. They started cutting bearing edges at a, a steeper angle because up until then, I think it had either I think it'd been 60 degrees or 30 yeah, 30 mm-hmm. degrees rather, uh, and then Sona cut them at 45, which became this kind of industry standard thing. So mm-hmm. the drums are Sona drums are notoriously resonant. Yeah, um, they're they're super resonant. Uh, but these just have a different character to it, and I think it's that bearing edge that gives them the warmth. Mm, absolutely, yeah. I think that's what I really love about it. You know, um, it's kind of like there's no fat on the sound; it just gets to the core of the sound for yeah. me. The snare drum. Uh, I bought a matching snare drum when I bought my kit. Um, this snare drum has made an appearance on the podcast before. It I has believe. made an appearance on the podcast before. You're correct. Um, when we did the Headhunters episode, we, right. we we used it for that, and um, I keep coming back to it. I, I just I have four drums, four snare drums. I have my vintage series. I have a rather special Yamaha. I got uh, in 2006, Yamaha had their 40th anniversary and I bought the, the 40th anniversary PHX snare, which is black brass with, a, uh, with engraved on it. So the, the, the engraved 
uh, basically they scored the shape of a, a phoenix with a tuning fork out and the actual natural brass comes through the drum so it wow. really pops it's got die cast hoops on it and it's a wonderful drum I think it was only 100 made uh, I have a 1970 Acrolyte um, and I bought that drum because it was made on my old man's 18th birthday um, so I don't really use it that much but it's a bit sentimental yeah, yeah, yeah. and then lastly I have um uh, a segmented shell 14 by 4 birch drum which was made by a customer believe it or not mm. uh, an old uh, uh, sort of retired air traffic controller came into the shop one day uh, long story short anyway I ended up buying he, had, he, son, he made these drums and I, he, he bought one but the point of all this is that I keep coming back to this drum mm. despite having these other options and these other voices I keep coming back to this sonar mm -hmm. because it just sounds like a snare drum should to me yeah um, and it's funny because I've had, I've had conversations with customers like, nah, it doesn't work for me. And because of where it sits in the range, I think it, it, it needs, a, it works best for me when it has a little bit of tension to it. It, yeah. it doesn't work as well as drums that sound abs like cardboard boxes. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. do, I'm not a massive fan of that sound anyway. Mm -hmm. So this drum just kind of works for me, man, at, at that kind of, um, at that kind of tuning range and all that. It has that mid, uh, that mid tonal crack. Yeah, it's really responsive. Yeah, whenever you've had the the, the drum certainly in the shop, and I've had a go on it, it mm. just you know it's got some crack off it as well. It really does. Know? And I used to have a an old Sonar D Light snare that uh, I coveted for a long, long time. A customer a friend of ours called Martin Smith has one, and every time he brings that drum in, I'm like, mm, I want that drum. <laughs> I want it. And then I found one. I found one on Facebook, minted condition, mm -hmm. and I bought it. And then it, it, it just it didn't hold up, man. It, for mm -hmm. me, I just I was like, I don't love it. Yeah. I don't love it anywhere near as much as I love the Or you don't series. love it enough to keep it. No, and we yeah. AB, do you remember we AB'd it? Yeah, we did, yeah. Um, we, the, we put the two of them together and... and the vintage blew it out of the water. It really did, man. I don't mm. know what it is. There's just a little bit of magic in this one. Yeah. So other features on the kit um, are the hoops. They're called Super Profil, as the Germans call them. They're redesigned uh, triple flanged hoops. But if you look at, uh, if you're watching on the video, you'll notice that the, the top of the hoop, you maybe see it there, is kind of rounded over as well. It's a kind of obviously matches the rounded bearing edge. But it just adds a little bit of weight to the to the um, the head. Mm -hmm. uh, and they feel somewhere... I was going to say, are they quite in between a triple flange and a die cast? They somewhere? are. They, they, like, your drums have triple flanged on them as yeah, well, but these do. feel a little bit heavier. Uh -huh. um, and I think that helps with that kind of vintage sound, you know, mm. that kind of older school sound. The hardware on... The, you'll notice the bass drum spurs, if you can see on the camera, they are single flange, or single uh, braced, rather. Single flanged? Single flanged. Single braced. So that, um, that throws back to... The vintage, uh, the vintage style from the sixties, and also if you can see, the snare throw off is an old school lever system. It's really, really simple. It's just a lever that moves up and down, and that lifts the throw off. Uh, that lifts the wires on and off the drum, and it's super smooth and super classy. Yeah. So yeah, I just think that drum, just like all the drums, in the vintage series, always have this distinct character about them you know they are all vintage sounding but i don't know maybe just to me just they all have this this little bit of magic in them yeah i know? think i would agree um and if anybody wants a real like we did a little bit of playing here but if anybody wants a real in-depth demo of them alex reeves the drummer for elbow did this really great uh drums in a room project where he took his vintage series kit into a variety of different studios and you can hear how it sounds and it sounds really amazing yeah really um, lets the shells do the talking yes yeah. yes i i would concur um there, there's cool things as well like there's there's not option you don't get options with sizes Mm -hmm. So all the rack toms are, are by 8, so 10-8, 12-8, 13-8, mm -hmm. you don't get a 12-9, you don't get a 10-7, you don't mm -hmm. get options in that, that's how you buy it. The bass drums are all by 14, so 18 by 14, 20 by 14, 22 by 14, I think they're 24 by 14 as well. Mm -hmm. And then the floor toms are all 2 inches shorter than a diameter, so 14-12, 16-14, 18-16. Yeah. And that, again, is a throwback to how they made them in the 60s. The finishes are a throwback to how they made them in the 60s. It's effectively the same finishes. Mm -hmm. Apart from California Blue, that's a new one. Yeah. But the, the finishes are basically how they made them um, back in the day as well. Yeah. My favourite of the back in the day ones is the Rosewood. Uh, that was not a finish they made. It was all rats. Was it, it was oh. all like, yeah, so they didn't make it. They offered it in red, uh, black, re uh, red, white and blue wraps. Oh, so they, yeah, they did. Sorry, California Blue is relatively... Uh, 
I like the older ones. And then they they introduced Black later. So right, the, the okay. Rosewood was just something they made when the drums came out initially. Oh, uh, okay. And, That's what and they made an up. Onyx, like a, a different, uh, I can't remember the name of it, um, but they discontinued both of those finishes yeah. in favour of these ones. There's t- uh, old school T-Rods on the bass drum as well that's worth a look. Um, and all the, you'll notice that all the um, T-Rods and all the like wing nut stuff, apart from my 12, because I lost it, I broke it actually. Is a vintage, uh, a vintage boy. looking. Uh, it's it, instead of being rounded edges, they're sharper edges. Come to a point. Um, Shall we whip a drum head off and yes. we can have a closer in depth yes, look at the bearing edge? Let's do that, and we'll show you the edges and things. We've taken a drum head off the twelve just to let you see. I'm going to hold it up to this camera. Now, hopefully, you can see that the bearing edge. Is, you probably need to see it there is is rounded over the top. So instead of it being cut at a steep angle in, uh, the bearing edge feels like it's almost flat. So, if I put a head on this, the head will sit flush, it'll sit completely flat, and um, the, the shell and head meet together really snugly, so it helps sort of dampen the shell already. And I love that without even a hoop, there's a tone. There's still a tone out the drum, yeah. yeah. it's great. And That's it doesn't need though. crowbarred on like an old, an old drum would. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, I, I really love it. Um, all the finishes are wraps, uh, and you can see where it stops there when you take the hoop off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll lift that up in the camera so they can. Yeah, so if you see the finish there, you'll see that it's like uh, most wraps stops shy, yeah. and that fits that uh, sort of um, plays into Sonar's optimum shell measurement yes. technology. Um, I should mention that the, the shell is what they call cross laminate tension free. It's the same with all sonar drums, and it just means they can make a really thin shell really strong. Mm-hmm. So, this is nine plies of, of wood, mm-hmm. but it's six mil, which is a standard drum shell. So, that's yeah. a really thin ply. Yeah. You know, nine of them to make up a six mil shell. So, that's the. They'll. they'll Put one one way and then the next one and then yeah. back and you know so that they, yeah. they 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 can form a really strong shell. Yeah, it's really reinforced and it's just you know it means you've just got a lot of shell for your for your buck. Absolutely, yeah, you absolutely, know. absolutely. So that kind of takes care of the vintage kit. I feel like our sonar kits are same but different. Okay. So and what I mean by that samesies. Uh, yeah, so like they're same by the fact that they're both German made kits. Mm-hmm. My kit is the Sonar SQ one. Mm-hmm. Um, it is their 100% European birch shelled kit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's drastically different from your vintage series, but there's a lot of similarities along the way in terms of the shell construction. Mm-hmm. Um, what I really fell in love with this kit, I really fell in love with this kit the first time I heard it played. I don't know if the first time I heard it being played and the reason why I fell in love with it was because it was Chris Coleman playing mm-hmm. it, but... There was just something about this kit in particular that I really, really liked. Birch shells naturally are quite focused and dry, mm-hmm. um, as you know. I don't know why I'm telling you that, as if you don't know that. Like You well, do know that. Other but people might not. Sure. Other people might not. So, um, birch is a naturally dry, um, focused wood. So, what that basically means is, unlike maple, it's not as warm. It's not as resonant. It's very focused, very, very dry. Um, having said all that, what I love about this kit, despite the fact obviously it's a birch kit and it is, as I say, focused and dry, it is really resonant and there's a very strong reason why. So it's because of their sound sustainer technology. Right. So essentially what that is, for those of you who don't know, is in between all of the hardware of all the drums, there's little rubber grommets. Um, on the actual tom mount itself and on the floor tom legs, there is a full um, part that is basically allows the hardware to mount to the drum without actually making contact with the shell, um, which allows the drums to be a lot more open, have mm-hmm. a lot more sustain than they usually would do. You know, a lot of the time, hardware is drilled straight onto the shell. I can obviously see on your vintage series, the hardware is drilled straight into the wood yeah. of the shell, which helps and, you know, is, is kind of characteristic of that vintage tone and the flavour that they're yeah. going for with that series of kit. This kit feels very much like... Um, like it's built for you know like you're kind of if you want a brand new shiny sound to me anyway it is um i don't know if i'm saying that because i just got this kit recently and it is very, still very new and shiny to okay. me okay um well, why don't we hear it yeah let's have a listen
So what do you think of that? I mean, firstly, the, 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 you're right about the resonance, the, especially the 14. The floor tom's ridiculous. Yeah, the four, the, like, oh, and I mean, when I first got this kit, you know, how many discussions did you and I have? Because it was almost, I, I almost couldn't understand it, how resonant it was. And that's because from my experience of owning drums, this is my first ever high-end kit. Uh-huh. And I, we spoke about this a lot. We we spoke about, we speak about this. We speak about this quite a lot. Where with high end drums, I feel like you almost need to learn how to play them a little bit. It's like you got to learn how to drive a car. Yeah, you know, like if you, if you buy a new car and you've not driven it, it could take you a yeah. month or so to get used to the brakes and the clutch and all that. Yeah, or like even as another example, like um, if your new car has technology that you've not been used to, yeah, you know, yeah. like inbuilt, like onboard dash cam and you know whatever, mm-hmm. um, it feels a lot like that. Um, certainly with this kit, but it just sounds incredible. You know, yeah. the, the sound of it is amazing. So yeah, it's loud. It's yeah. Another thing that I I'm a loud drummer anyway, and I feel like a lot of the bands that I play with will regret <sighs> hearing me getting a louder kit. You yeah. know, but it is. I mean, the first time I hit the bass drum, it just about took my head off. Yeah, you know? for sure. And, like, and it's only a twenty as well. It's only a twenty. Um, when I was upgrading my drums, I already had a small bass drum anyway. But I wanted to upgrade to something, you know, that was a little bit bigger, but still had that small feel mm-hmm. about it, which is where this kit really kind of shined for me. Um, having heard it the first time I saw Chris Coleman play it, he played the SQ1. It was in the red, um, the mm-hmm. um, hot red finish. Um, and it just blew me away, you know, the depth that you could get out of it, you know, how loud it was. Chris Coleman's obviously a loud player anyway, so it suits his style of playing. This, I feel like, really suits my style of playing. Um, I've had it in the studio. Birch kits work great in the studio. I was just about to ask you. Recorded this, haven't you? I've recently recorded it. I've yet to gig it um, because of circumstances beyond everyone's control. Yeah. Um, but I've had it in the studio, and it's the first time I've been in the studio where the engineer has had to do very little to my drums, if anything, really, wow. to get them to sound how they needed to yeah, sound. Yeah, that's rad. You know, um, so I was. That was another aspect of it that really impressed me. You know, it's always a nice compliment I find when the engineer asks you what kind of kit you've got. Yeah, you know, for sure, for um, sure. Because they think about getting one for the studio. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's always nice. Um, uh, we should add that we played your kit, or you played your kit rather, with the Gavin Harrison protein snare, just because you don't have a matching snare. Yeah. So I cheated a little bit. So I don't have an SQ1 matching snare drum, but I wanted to get a snare drum that still was made of the same wood. Yeah. So the Gavin Harrison protein snare is made of birch. Yeah. So that was so. the closest comparison I got, I, I had. Um, it's worth noting that for the toms on this, um, they're made from seven ply. Right. Seven mil thick. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a thicker shell. Thicker shell. Um. Obviously, less plies. Um. I'll in a minute. I'll whip the head off this, and I'll. I'll <laughs> that sounded a weird sentence in my head. Um. I'll let you have a look at the bearing edge. It's a standard forty-five degree bearing yeah, yeah. edge, anyway. Um. So it kind of leads into what you're saying, you know, mm-hmm. about you know sonar, um, switching to forty-five degree bearing edges, and you know that being the standard, um, for a while. But I think there's a lot of tone out of these drums, um, despite the fact that they're so dry mm-hmm. um, and really, really focused. Um, the bass drum, conversely to the toms, is a 10-ply drum, 10-mil right. thick. Wow. So, so it's, yeah. it's quite beefy. Absolutely. Um, it's got a bit of weight to it as well. It's funny because uh, apart from apart from two inches, <laughs> our, drums, our drums are the same size. Yeah. As yeah. yours, 14 by 12, right? 14 by 14. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's 14 by 14. Oh, that's yeah. shocking. Oh, it's 14 by 13, sorry. 14 by 13. Right, so, so it's three inch. inches. Yeah. Aye. So <laughs> it makes all the difference. Because I'm 14 by 12, you're 14 by 13, both 12 8. Yeah. I'm a 20 by 14, you're a 20 by 16. Yeah. Yeah. So um, these drums also have OSM or optimum shell measurement, um, which basically means that this, the, the drums on this kit are slightly undersized. Mm. Um, so the best comparison I have to that is you won't find the same size necessarily of this 12 inch sq1 tom is what you will for say a yamaha 12 inch tom yeah, or a yeah. ludwig you know yeah, yeah um and it just creates optimal contact essentially for the drum head like you've spoken mm-hmm. about already you know it creates optimal a, a contact point between the head and the shell to where it's i the best way to think about it is kind of like built in evans level 360 <laughs> you know yeah that's the best way to think it that's the best yeah. way to describe it i think um, to give you an idea, so the, the 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 drum head, no matter what the brand, is always going to sit flush to the bearing edge of the mm-hmm. shell. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to mean that the drums are just going to sound how they sound. So yeah, yeah. Another cool similarity 
um, between ours and yours is that there are only four finishes in each. Yeah, well, so I think they've discontinued some of the the, the yeah, SQ1 finishes, but yeah, when the they, range came out, there was only four. They've recently discontinued, I believe, the hot red and the green as well yeah. have been discontinued. Um, but they based their finishes on classic cars. Ah, um, cool. So that's why... That's, all, that's another sort of vintage thing, getting snuck in the back door. Yeah, there. a little bit, yeah. So they, 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 you know, obviously Germans are well-renowned for their motor engineering yeah, world. So for sure. Sonar basically took that concept and basically made it into a drum kit. So what finish is yours called? My finish is called GT Black. Right. Um, and what, like, that's... Actually, I don't know if you know this, but you probably do because you're Mr. Soner, but um, that's where they got the idea for the rubber gaskets in the Optimum. Um, I did not know that. Did you not? No. So basically it sits in... They got the idea from the same way of how an engine fits in a car. It's Isn't held. that amazing? There you go. So uh, again, sneaking in the back door of you know classic cars, you yeah. know, they got the idea for all this stuff from you know the mechanics of a car. That's so. brilliant. Ah, oh, cool. Thanks for that. I didn't know that. There That's you great. You won't find that on Top Gear, will no, you? No, you will not. You will not. Um, so yeah, I mean, I love the lugs. I love that they are they are very very sonar. Yeah, they're standard. Um, so these are the same lugs you'll find on um, your Pro Light or your mm-hmm. SQ2. Um, mm-hmm. So unlike your um, teardrop lugs, um, these are very just conventional standard you know and um, they have the tune safe system built in as well yes. so the drums naturally will stay in tune yeah and that's you know. across all the ranges yeah 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 so um so i think it's great you know having having played this kit in a studio seeing what it's like under mic uh, mic conditions and obviously you've heard it under um somewhat mic conditions as well um this kit really impressed me and I, I, I like I've, I've had a thing for black drum kits with offset hoops yeah yeah for a while for sure. Um, so that's really scratched that itch for me. Yeah. Would you get a matching snare? I've thought about getting a matching snare for it. Right. Because um, I, I do cheat on it. I do use a Yamaha um, <laughs> recording custom brass snare drum. So I'm very sorry, Sonar. Um, having said that, I've been considering, you know, maybe... I had one idea that I thought was pretty rad. I thought I would get an SQ2 13, six and a half oh. snare drum in the same... Um, finish as the hoops absolutely so it would still match it that you know? would be really cool um and where i draw inspiration from that was from an sq2 that we have in where yeah. we have you know the matching hoops yeah to the, the, the ruby red one yeah so i thought that would be pretty rad um, it would be it would be really cool what i haven't decided yet is the wood i would get it from okay um i don't know if i would necessarily get a birch shell how come well i don't know okay <laughs> is my honest answer no, no. I don't know I just I feel like I mean having played the the Gavin Harrison snare you know I really like the sound of that drum but I feel like I've already got a really loud snare drum as it is with the brass yeah do you remember the Jeff podcast yes and he had his SQ2 snare which is a birch drum yeah it's a 14 right. by 4 yeah and it's really loud as well yeah so I think like the drums kind of take care of that for me mm-hmm. like the actual the shell of the SQ1 take care of that for me so I don't know. I've been I've been talking with our lovely sonar rep Edwin. I feel it. like it's if it's not going to be birch. It feel, to me, I would feel like it has to be beach. Yeah, because it is the sonar sound. I think. Yeah, it's I think kind so. of what they're known for. I think so. And I love that as a characteristic of the wood, you get an even spread of high, middle, low. Yeah, that's what beach is all about. You know, with birch, you get uh, less highs and more mids and more. You know what I mean? That kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. With, but with beach, you get an even spread. Yeah, that's what I would go anyway. So I think if if you're a drummer looking for a new kit, and certainly a kit that's great for you know under mic conditions in a studio, or if you want a kit that's really loud and you know kind of balls to the wall, I should mention actually um, while I'm here. So they do this is um the 320 shell pack so this is the 12 14 20 mm-hmm. shell pack um they call it a 320 shell pack yeah so but for toms you can get sizes 8 through 18 bass drums you can get 20 by 16 22 by 17.5 or 24 by 14 as well so uh, lots of different options there for sure can you get it drilled no you can't get it drilled yeah, so you, can, you, you can get the the vintage drilled they do i I'm right in saying Sonar make a um, a stencil. Certainly, they do for the Rescue Two. Yes, we, we yeah, could if yeah, you, you wanted you, to. You, that is correct. Yes, you know. So yeah, you um, could you retroactively drill it. drill it. That's it. Retroactively, that's the word. You've been really good with the words today, Thanks. Chris. Um, so Sorry. yeah, I really like this kit. Word I mean, of the day toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> word of the day calendar. Um, so um, before this kit, I believe was a Birch Infinite. So that would stay yes. in the with the Beach Infinite. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, you know, that was kind of. Chris Coleman was the poster boy for that. Correct. Much like he very much is for the SQ1. Um, 
And yeah, I love it. I love this kit. I think, you know, it's expansive as well. I got a 10 inch tom for this mm-hmm. that I actually um, use in place of the 12. Yeah. Um, because the, I'm used to a smaller. Yeah. Tom. We felt that the 12, with what we wanted to do with a, a 12 14 setup, would make more sense because I don't have a 10. Yeah. And the Pro Light that we're going to look at does not have a 10. It's got 12 14. So yeah. th- the, the three 320 yeah. shell packs made perfect sense. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to whip the drum head off this and you can have a look at the beer and edge cool. and see inside the shell. All right. Oh, you're doing the smell test. Oh, man. Oh, they do like, smell great. Yeah. Um, look how thick that shell is. Yeah. So let's turn this bad boy around. Please don't drop it. Oh, man. I know. I'm so paranoid. Look at how thick that is. That's a thick boy. It is. That is. B-O-I. That's a thick chubby boy. That's a chubby boy. Um, yeah. It's, it's. I mean, that is the reason for the sound of those, eh? Yeah, Just the, the, the The quality thickness. And I love the bare and edge cut. Yeah, it's and so clean. I, I feel it's like actually razor sharp, actually. You know, I feel like, like because the shell is so thick, it augments how how well cut the pair of edges are. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Um, plus, the smell is divine. I'm going for a, for twosies. <laughs> You're going um, for seconds. What's unfortunate that you won't see on the camera because it's just it's such a minute detail, but minute. Do you like that? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is look at the the de- you can see like almost all the individual plies of the drum. Can you yeah. see that? I can see that. that yeah. looks so it's like just it's almost like its own little art deco kind of <laughs> vibe, and I really like it. Yeah. You know? And if this was furniture, I would sit on it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, do you know what? It's, it's also really rad as well, is because it's lacquered. It's finished all the way to the top, pretty much. Yeah. So that's obviously the difference between um, Chris has been a wrap is that you know they can finish the, um, the whole thing right up to the bearing edge so it's but it's otherwise awesome. they would have to um they would have to make the lugs come out a little bit further because the hoop would be too far out for where the tension rod goes into the head yeah you know just the level of detail on these drums and i think like look at them look at they're so shiny you know, they are they are um so yeah so i really like these drums i think they're rad um, i i love that the lugs are linear despite a lot you know i love that mine are offset but they're, yeah. and they're, they're not too wide apart when you on the 10 it looks really really cool because there's a very very small yeah, gap a very very small gap and it's actually is it not the reason why you can't get a 10 by 6 no uh, tom, or an 8 i think or an 8 yeah. or an sq2 because yeah. you know they literally they would have to do it offset yeah you know and obviously some people some people don't like the offset i'm sure you know you can get an 8 because chris coleman has one yeah on these drums uh, yeah yeah so oh wait yeah, yeah maybe i'm wrong okay. yeah I'm it's sure it's, 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 I think it's why they're not 10 by 6 Yeah Yeah that's what I mean Yeah So I mean I think you said that Yeah um, So this is obviously 12 by 8 um, I could see an, In an alternative universe um, Someone like me Who is silly enough Well maybe not silly enough But you could Absolutely turn this into a snare If you wanted to probably You'd obviously need to get The bearing edges Oh I would just Oh that, that makes me feel a little weird I would just SQ2 that Sorry that yeah, actually got I, I know, had I seen a, you do a that, reaction yeah. there. I tried to do that with an old yeah, drum. Yeah, yeah, less said like, about yeah. why you butchered. The, yeah, imagine butchering your high end solo drum. It's like, stop it. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, why would you do that? Yeah. Um, don't do that. No. But buy one of these drums because they're amazing. Or, or a full kit. Don't just buy one of the drums because then you just have one drum. Um, so there you yeah, have that. Really that like so that is SQ1. Any more to talk about? Do you want to talk about any more? I mean, I I, I think I, I could probably sing this kit's praises all night, you mm-hmm. know, but I feel like for the for the sake of moving forward, yes. I think we should move forward yeah, and so you, talk about the prolate. Yeah, so you fire that back together. And we're back! So um, the, the last kit in the range we're going to look at is the prolate. Now, I'm just going to hold this one because... Um, we didn't set a kit up. We didn't have the space. Um, so, Prolite is, to me, this is going to sound really weird, but it's mm-hmm. the most sonar of them all. And what I mean by that is it's, it's, it's the one that looks more like the historic sonar ranges. Right. Okay. It's the one that's within the ranges that doesn't have a feature to talk about in the same way like the SQ-1 has its own mounting system that was specifically mm-hmm. designed for it. Yeah. The Vintage has its own thing with the lugs and the edges. The, the Prolite is the is the most sonar in that respect. Yeah, and what uh, it's, it's a part of the light family of drums. So they had uh, light, they had highlight, they had D-light, and now they have Prolite. Pro-Lite. Yeah. So this is a vintage maple shell, which means it's a uh, four-ply... Sorry, four mil with two mil reinforcement rings. It's a thin shell with reinforcement rings. Yeah. So I guess the, the reinforcement is a kind of feature, I guess. Yeah, okay. Were, uh, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, 
so yeah, um, there's a variety of finishes. This one is ebony white stripes, um, which I love. Mm. It's absolutely it's gorgeous. Really classic. We've had we had a customer who had an SQ2 in the same finish, and it's gorgeous. He did, he did. He had a snare drum and all sorts. Yeah, it was really um, beautiful. So yeah, it's really gorgeous. Um, so the the, um, the plyage on this is the bass drum is twelve ply. Um, it's a thick bass drum, man. The toms are nine ply. Yeah. So the bass drum is six mil plus two mil for the um, the mm-hmm. edges and or the reinforcement rings rather. Mm-hmm. They call them dynamic edges, and the the toms are four ply with. Mm-hmm. Uh, four mil, sorry, plies and mils. I keep getting it. Four mil with two mil. Yeah. Uh, so we'll take the bearing edge off in a minute. And um, yeah, like Paul, you, you mean you're, you you went from being really good with your words to being really bad I, with your words? Yeah, I did. Um, so as um, the APS mounting system, like you will see here, is the same as you would get on SQ2, where yeah. the, the the metal is sandwiched in between rubber. I wonder because um, the, the lugs look really similar, but I don't think they've got the grommets like your SQ1 has. Um, but no, they, they don't appear to. No, no, but there's no, there's no um, metal to wood contact. Though there's rubber in between the lugs, yeah. you know. So very classically sonar. I know. think it's quite cool that all three kits in their German, or I say all three kits, but like the three kind of one of each variant of wood has also their own mountain system as well. Yeah, you know, it's mm-hmm. quite absolutely, grand, absolutely. You know? They've, they've um, taken, they've not just done like. Uh, Oh, like that mountain system for the vintage works great. Let's just use that on all three, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So um, I think that's really cool. It is really cool. And then with the SQ2, they take it one step further because uh, the the Tom mount part of it is the same as Pro Light here, but they also have the sustain uh, control on the bottom of it. So what yeah. that what happens is there's a, there's a little knob that you can turn that would that, that goes here. I could maybe show you on this drum. Here. Oh. We're all very nervous when, yeah. when one of us touches this kit. Yeah, so you, you see at the top where the where the, the thumb screw is. No, the thumb screw uh, at the top of the mount. Sorry, Adam. It's like really bad QVC in it. Uh, like it's really bad. It's, uh, yeah, bad much, QVC. Much more so we, where that that's the that whole part, that whole top part is the same as the Pro Light. Yep. Um, but the bottom part has the, the the knob that goes on the same as the bass drum, uh, and it, it will uh, tension or change the sustain. It puts tension on the shell, so it either shortens or lengthens the sustain of the drum. So, yeah. um, so to augment your point, it would then mean that all four. German ranges have their own mountain system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the SQ2 is basically just like an upgraded version of the Pro Light. But mm-hmm. you know, you're right. You know, they all have their own thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to put this drum down. Um, so that takes care of the kind of the, the mountain system. You know, um, it's it's Maple Man. Everybody knows really what Maple does. It, it's it's really renowned uh, sound. It's it's used all every drum company makes a Maple kit, and, yeah. and so there is no exception. You know. Um, I think with this kit though, it just sounds exceptional. I've yeah. I've set up, and I'm sure you have as well, um, for customers coming to try it, new kits. I've set up the Pro Lights before, and comparing it to other brands who make Maple kits, you know, for me personally, the vintage Maple um, Pro Light just blows them out of the water. Yeah, it's got some, it's got something yeah. else. Some, you know, uh, we've actually had customers take it over SQ2. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. We have. We we've had a customer who both came in. Maple. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we had a customer come in and he, he wanted to buy a high-end drum kit and he bought, sorry, he tried every single 10-inch tom we had in the shop mm-hmm. uh, of every high-end kit and the Pro Light was easily the winner so he did a whole massive rigging Pro Light. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so they are great, great, great drums. Shall we hear how they sound? Yes, we shall.
Okay, anyway. so here we are. We have taken the head off this, and you can hopefully see the bearing edge cut. Why do you keep laughing at me? <laughs> hopefully you can see the bearing edge cut there. Um, what is really apparent to me on this, and I don't know if you can see it, Adam, is you can see that the, the different colours of wood on the bearing edge show that it's cross malt laminate. The, yeah. the, the plies are obviously going to Do you want to hold it up a little bit more and angle it? Yeah. Um, hopefully it zooms in far enough. Zoom, zoom. Uh, but it, the bearing edge is cut really well, and you can hopefully see that that indents as a reinforcement ring. So Yeah. Yeah, fantastically made. Can I have a look at that? I want to have a sniff Yeah, test. it smells amazing. Uh, we are we make no bones about the fact that we smell drums in here. Um, it's like a thing. It's like almost like a part of your initiation. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, those are some pretty, pretty stunning looking drums, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. And they sound amazing. Yeah, so. of course, absolutely. That goes without saying. Yeah. So that kind of covers. You know. Yeah, that covers the kind of the ranges of of sonar that we have available here. Um, I mean, we we could have done an SQ2 kit, but I feel like those kits are so custom anyway that, you know, you're not really going to get much difference. Well, you just, you know, it, it it's not a... It wouldn't be a fair comparison because... No, because they, you just never know what you're going to buy. Yeah. You know, so like, uh, we could have tried them, but if if people aren't interested in putting that combination together then it doesn't really matter yeah you know so. it is worth saying with sq2 that if you want a combination of all three of these kits so if you want for example a birch bass drum with a beach 12 inch tom or you know a beach snare drum with you know maple, maple toms yeah. you know you can do all that with absolutely SQ2. i will i will say though that the features that are unique to the sq1 and the vintage series aren't available in SQ2. So you cannot get the vintage series hardware yeah. or mounting system and you can't get the SQ1 mounting system on Correct. SQ2. Yeah. You know, so um there are billions of options already. This would that would just make it a headache, I think, yeah, for exactly. them. You know, they have their work cut out for them trying to produce these drums anyway. You yeah, know, so, exactly. You know, and a so, lot yeah. of time and care is taken into making all these drums as well. Yeah. You know, it so. really, really is. It really, really is. So um yeah. Uh do you want to talk about anything else that's not sonar? It's not sonar. Um, I mean, I think we've pretty much covered it. I think, you know, um, obviously it's new year. New year, new me. Well, there was a question, which is where... Oh, okay. Um, right. I, I, when you had put something out on the forum, uh, David, a friend of mine, asked us about what our favourite drum book is. Okay. And is there anything we're working on right, right now? So, um, do you have a favourite drum book? I have a drum book that i often refer to and it's of course the legendary um syncopation mm. ted reed mm -hmm. um however i have not a critique about that book but i uh, we spoke about this privately but that book for me is something that i've n never really understood how to operate mm -hmm. i don't know if that's just me being silly but you know you see a lot of i certainly see a lot of pro players you know like doing you know, either grooves or licks or whatever, chops. And it's like, there'll be a comment notoriously saying, oh, like, where did this come from? Where did this concept come from? And, you know, a lot of times it will come out of syncopation by Ted Reed, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just, I thought, like, for me, I've never been able to quite master it maybe the way that I should, but I've never been shown how, so. Well, I was just about to say, you kind of need the key for that. Yeah. Uh, I was given the key for that, so right. I do know how to do it. Yeah. But I will say as well that he brought out a follow up mm -hmm. syncopation 2 yeah which shows you how to do it oh okay fair enough um, i didn't know that yeah yeah but I've, I've been shown how to do it but there's also another book that gives you an idea of of what to do and then people just went mental and took it further yeah you know yeah. but yeah i, I kind of get it yeah. i kind of know what to do with that so. i do like exercises i've worked out from it are great you know they're good fun um but i just feel like i don't i haven't personally unlocked it to its fullest potential i mean once you get it um, it's an amazing challenge and some of the things you can do with it are, are, are pretty tremendous hence why it's still around yeah it's absolutely legendary um it's a great book actually yeah um i guess to answer the second part of that question i'm gonna figure out some more exercises from ted reed's situation <laughs> and work on that in the new year um i think also playing more i think in the new mm, year because yeah. i feel like oh, i don't know about you but I've certainly not played a lot in this past year. No, nope. um, not at all. So I feel like you know there's a righteous set of drums sitting in front of me that need a, a good a good beating. Mm, for mm. sure. Um, what about you? Favorite book? 
I don't know if I've got a favourite book. I have a massive drum book library mm-hmm. and have had for years. Do you not still have all your old copies of like Rhythm and all that? And I've got, yeah, I've got boxes of them in my storage unit that yeah. need to go to recycling because <laughs> they're just sitting in a storage unit doing yeah, nothing. Not doing uh, nothing. If anybody wants them, <laughs> Hala. If, if you want to pay shipping and I'll ship boxes of uh, magazines to you, I'll do that. Yep. Um, I have books that I have never used. I have books really? that I've never opened. Wow, really? Oh, Which mental. ones? Any, any uh, no, ones? no, I've got that many I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but did you just I've, buy a drum book and then just like think? Well, I, oh. I, for, for a while I did, yeah. yeah. I really like, believe it or not, I really like Mark Giuliano's book. I think it's very, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that Syncopation is great. Uh, the Stick Control book is great. Um, there was a... There, you know the magazine Modern Drummer? Yeah, yeah. It was founded by a guy called... <laughs> no, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Ron Spagnardi was the guy who finished it. And Ron used to write drum books. Mm-hmm. And he had a book called Progressive Steps to Independence. And when I was learning, when I was getting really into jazz and playing that pattern... Oh, here we go. I, I, went, would... I rinsed that book. Yeah. Because it was really, really methodical and really laid out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was... It went from really, really simple to really, really difficult. Mm-hmm. But it just made perfect sense. Yeah. Every single exercise uh, progressed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I loved that book. I thought it was really great. I don't know what ever happened to it. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure where the book is now, but mm. it was a really great book. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other books. I mean, the John Riley books were amazing as well. Mm. John Riley's Art of Bop Drumming, Beyond Bop Drumming. Um, all his canon of books are, are amazing. Yeah. Um, the play-alongs in them are great. You know, it all makes yeah. sense, you know. This is where I think between you and I, I think this is where you see the, the, the difference in, you know, our experiences of being drummers, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, certainly learning drums, you know, mm-hmm. because my first experience is like, you know, learn how to play this groove from rock school and you'll pass your exams. Kids, I don't think rock know. school was even around when I started playing. Well, there you go. So, um, but I mean, like, like I, I only bought books like, Ted Reed's Syncopation, you know, Stick Control, because I was just told that these books were great. Mm-hmm. So that's what I, I, what I meant when I said I've not learned how to use it properly because I've mm. not, never been shown yeah, how yeah. to use it, you know. Yeah, a lot of my sure. drumming was self-taught yeah, and yeah. versus in, like, you know, things to pass all your exams and, yeah, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's really interesting just when you're saying Oh, that, you absolutely, know, like, you know. absolutely, you know. But, the, I mean, the, the systems that came out of these books were, were devised because that was all these guys had in, in the 50s or the 60s, mm-hmm. whenever, I think, whenever um, Syncopation came out, that was all they had, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, they would take uh, stick control and they would assign the rights and lefts to the left foot and... Uh, the left hand and the right foot and played them as comping exercises against jazz time and stuff you know so mm-hmm. because they had to find ways to be creative with the material it was all they had you know yeah. um, now it's spelled out everywhere you mm-hmm. know you can find all of this stuff it's readily available but do you feel like here's a question for you mm-hmm. do you feel like even though all this stuff is like you know like when you're saying everything's spelled out do you feel like a lot of um, videos of teaching drummers how to do things are basically just doing the same video just different presented differently like i'm not I doing things like for example like if you're saying like you know they would do comping exercises between um against jazz time but just because they they couldn't think of other ways to, or they, they didn't have any other means of you know doing all these things like whereas you get like, there's about a million videos of drummers showing everyone how to do a paradiddle yeah so you know what i'm getting at I, like, I know exactly what you're getting at um and i find this is uh, sort of prevalent throughout sort of every industry where there is someone that teaches you something mm-hmm. um there are those that teach in parrot fashion mm-hmm. uh so like monkey see monkey do mm-hmm. kind of thing and then there are those teachers that give you principles or ideas and i think if you can give someone good principles and good foundations they can go away and do it themselves mm-hmm. um i think there's a lot of spelling out mm-hmm. has happened and I don't think people know how to be creative in the same way, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think it's also relative to the music you're trying to play. Mm-hmm. Um, jazz music makes you be creative. It forces you into a corner. Mm-hmm. You have to in order to play the music. Yeah. Um, but pop music and rock music doesn't necessarily. Uh, and in some respects, it hasn't, in my opinion, hasn't massively changed in the last how many years you know Mm -hmm. um you kind of play what the bass player's playing in your right foot and then there'll be a point where you throw a drum fill in and that drum fill will be learned from somewhere else Mm -hmm. you know yeah um i was just curious yeah absolutely you know um there are guys that are 
you know, really creative. And I think if you if you look out, guys like Arik and Prota or Dan Maya. Oh, or, Arik and Prota is phenomenal. Yeah. You sat and watched. I, I like. I found myself like at night just watching his Instagram at the time. Yeah, I I, I kind of like or um uh, uh, I can't remember this guy's name. Um, I'll I will link it. Um. He's a really, really. He plays for. He played at some point for the Mars Volta, mm-hmm. Deanti Parks, I think. Right. Yeah. DeAnthony Parks, I think, is his name. Mm-hmm. He's mega as well. Um, Chris Dave, all these guys that are that are super, super progressive and, and different. You know, mm-hmm. they're not just. Um, they're not just. Another drummer. Oh no, no, it's just copping licks. Yeah. You know, um, it happened in the eighties with Weckl and Vinnie and Gad and all these guys, and it, it, they they were the guys to copy, and then it changed in the nineties, and it just becomes a kind of fashion to yeah. do that. And I'm not slagging it off. It's just yeah. it just is my opinion of it. You know, who do you think going into the 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 twenties again? Who do you think is going to be like a drummer that everyone will be? Oh, what a question. Um, or who? Maybe I'll make it. I'll sim- not simplify it a bit, but I'll, I'll kind of like give you a, a bigger time scale. So, from two thousand and ten to two thousand nineteen, who would you say was a drummer like that? Nate Wood. Nate Wood. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mark Juliana, Nate Wood, Zach Danziger. I would have said Nate Smith. Yeah, Nate Smith as well. Um, but Nate Wood really pushes the mental envelope because he plays bass and drums at the same time. That guy, you know, yeah. that that's mental. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he has got this really amazing brain where he can almost recall really complicated tunes after one lesson. He doesn't really read so much, mm-hmm. um, but he's just got an amazing memory for all that kind of stuff. So he's a really fascinating drummer. Mm-hmm. Um, love him or hate him, however you feel about the music he plays. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's a really fascinating guy. I think there's a lot changing with gear. I think mm-hmm. people find a sound now by using gear. Um, yeah. So I think what will happen is you'll end up there'll be somebody that comes out with a four-piece kit and just has this really iconic sound again. I think that will become a fashion again, where you just instead of you know putting symbols on toms and stacking symbols together, there'll be someone comes around like Steve Jordan who can who's just instantly Steve Jordan. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think that will go away. But in, in terms of who it's going to be, I have no idea. You know. Yeah. There are so many hip young players out there that I don't know anything about, and and the way that people consume music is vastly different now. Yeah. So you know, it's TikTok music and Instagram music where it's like a minute video, and that's the guy with the new sound. It's like mm, mm-hmm. it doesn't doesn't really work for me because yeah, I don't know that he would last live. Mm-hmm. You know, um, wh- whoever that may be, he or she. You know. um, but then on like a positive side, like you know, like that's it's still pretty cool that in a platform. Whereas you've got limitations, you know, they're still managing to create something that's pretty... Oh, anything that encourages great. people to play the drums is great. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm not being a dad about it and being like, down <laughs> with the kids. You know, that's not what I mean. I just mean that uh, it's really hard to define and answer your question when, mm. when you know, people have an intention span that is a minute video. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. I mean, what chance have you got if you're mm-hmm. the guy that's trying to be the new drummer, you know? Mm-hmm. Um I I am a big fan of guys like Alex Reeves plays for Elbow. I've spoken about him on this podcast. I think he's cool. He's mm-hmm. got a thing, um, and there'll always be guys like Neil Wilkinson that that can just tear it up and yeah. and, and somewhat underground. I would say yeah. In some yeah. respects, you know, Ian Thomas, he's a UK session guy who's an absolute legend and total monster player. You mm-hmm. know, um, then there's guys like Carlock as well, who in the last however many years have got a thing going on. They've got a sound. They've got a style. Mm-hmm. You know, so. But as in terms of the future, I don't know. Um, but I, I, Nate Nate Wood for me would be the guy in the last ten years that's really went whoa for yeah. me. He's a monster. You know? Nice. So, um, I think I'll do it, eh? Yeah. Yeah, take us home. Yeah, well, I'm going to take us home in the form of our brand new outro. Oh. Oh. So we will see you for episode 38, guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Drummers Only Radio. You can find us online at www.drummersonly.co.uk. Drop us a line. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Drummers Only UK. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We're on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Any questions, info at drummersonly.co.uk is the email. Or if you need leads, it's leads at drummersonly.co.uk. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Drummers Only.